1985, I would not go to school unless I had my coffee and I watched He-Man. Those are the rules. My mother knew, she made me coffee, because again, lacks parenting, uh, that's why we're here. And she would get me some coffee, filled it with sugar, and I would sit there and just like angrily watch He-Man, because I just hate mornings. You're a loser, Skeletor. This is every single heroic He-Man figure ranked. Now with any ranking video, you're getting basically a really interesting and fun way to see the worst to the best of the entire line and you're gonna get a nice reminder of every figure if you had them. I know He-Man pretty well, but if you're like a He-Man super fan, like I'm a G.I. Joe super fan, you probably know He-Man better than me. So tell me what, you, what I get wrong in the comments below. I'd love to hear uh, what your rankings are. I am gonna put down some criteria for what I think makes a great He-Man character, in my opinion. Tell had made an attempt to make some Conan figures to go along with the Conan movie. That fell apart. Star Wars hit and all of a sudden they knew, oh, we need to get in on this. We need to create our own mythology, our own uh, IP. And so they created He-Man. And you can tell that the Conan influence is there. He-Man ain't a whole lot like Conan. But in my world, He-Man was a lot like Conan. And that to me is like, for me, what makes a great He-Man uh, character is how much does it fit into that sort of darker version of He-Man, that Frank Frazetta painting, Robert E. Howard version of He-Man. And, uh, and the art, just the art of He-Man uh, is these beautifully painted Frank Frazetta style paintings that really echo a weird fantasy, really give a feel for that. We had our goofy little cartoon version, but when we played, it was dark. There was murder. There were heads being chopped off. There were uh, bodies being crushed. He-Man was a barbarian going through and hacking and slashing his way through Eternia to protect people. My world of He-Man was a combo of the cartoon, but I understood the cartoon was a, a kind of goofy, as all 80s cartoons were, kind of goofy geared towards kids. And they were hitting a target that was a little lower than where I was at. Even as like a nine year old, I was in a dark place. I wanted that more Conan like. So for me, here's the criteria I think makes a great uh, He-Man character. The design, these are really well designed figures. And of course that factors in how well do these things move? What do they look like? What are their accessories? That's the design is gonna be a big part of that. And part of that design, and what I think one of the makes He-Man stand out so, so much is how inventive those action features were. Sometimes they were really inventive and really interesting. Sometimes they were really interesting and inventive, but they don't really necessarily like help you in that uh, play. They were kind of dumb. <laughs> So ultimately, how well does that feature and the design and all those things play into the more dark and weird and uh, Frank Frazetta style thing that I particularly was looking for? And if you're not, I get it, I get it. If you like the cartoon and that's your thing, um, sure, okay. Just that's where I was at. And the last thing is their name. Like the name really can, because you have some very cool characters with really and stupid names, right? So I think the naming, I don't think they were geniuses at naming. I think they were geniuses at design, but the names, like you'll see everybody's an or, right? Stink or, Grizzle or, or, something or, 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 or. They're all ors. And, uh, you know, a lot of the times they get some real dumb names and that may factor into where they go on this list. Okay, well, let's stop talking about it. Let's get to ranking. At the very, bottom of the barrel, we have Gwildor. Ugh. Gwildor is from the movie and therefore gonna be kind of low on the list as being that movie was just such a flop. It stinks, it's not good. And I think even Gwildor is really terrible even for that movie because Gwildor is like, um, he's like the poor man's Orko, right? I mean like, I'm not even that big of a fan of Orko uh, to, to be fair, like I think Orko's kind of annoying. 
He's sort of the Jar Jar Binks of the Masters of the Universe. He's like, he's put there to be funny and to have be the comic relief, but he's not like that funny and he can be annoying. But at least Orko is kind of adorable. Gwildor is grotesque. Gwildor is a very gross looking character. I mean, just, you know, the, the scene in Masters of the Universe was he eating like barbecued chicken and it's just like his gross face is covered with barbecue sauce. So he's a gross looking guy, a gross looking character. And uh, not interested in Gwildor, uh, uh, not fun to play with, not really good in the action features. Uh, nobody wants Gwildor. Next on my list, and you can only get this in Italy. The rarity does not make it any better. And this is called Laser Power He-Man. Laser Power He-Man. He just doesn't even look like He-Man at this point. I think this, the line had obviously descended into a failure. Mattel had nixed it, except in Italy, I guess. I don't know. I guess Italy, the Italian kids like really love He-Man. I'm, I'm wondering, is like He-Man just like a phenomenon in Italy? the way David Hasselhoff is a phenomenon in Germany. I have no idea, but for some reason, there's just a couple of things they made just for Italy, and this is one of them. Laser Power He-Man, and he just looks chunky and dumb, and he doesn't even look like He-Man, so. <laughs> Next on my list, we have King Randor. All right, now I know he's an essential character, and if you're a super big He-Man fan, maybe you're telling me I got my head up my ass for putting King Randor so low on this list. I'm gonna tell you why. One, I'm an American, and I do not, ex as an American, I do not respect the monarchy in any way, okay? And I, I, you're nothing worse than an American that is like obsessed with the royal family, that's like repulsive. Like, we left England because we understood that uh, having a king is stupid, and no one should obey the king. So, so that's one. Shot number two at King Randor is, he looks so much like the Burger King, that, I mean, like, could you just do a couple of things to make him just look a less like the Burger King? It's also weird because they did have, I, I believe He-Man had a pretty big you know, um, uh, collaborative tie-in with Burger King. So it's like, was the Burger King King Randor? I don't know. And remember, you can get King Randor free when you buy any three Masters of the Universe figures. Next, we have Rock On. Again, dumb name, okay? Rock on. I guess rock on could be kind of cool. You'd have like a few of these like stones maybe rolling down a hill and you know landing in, uh, near villains and then all of a sudden the stone creates and transforms into rock on. Um, but ultimately it just ends up a sort of chunky and stupid transformer. And I think one of the key things is like, you're gonna see like a lot of lines try to do some sort of cool transformer version of them. Uh, and uh, and then and failed and really one of the things that I think Transformer like we understand why Transformers work and it was talked about in the movie Big he puts forth the idea of here there's a Transformer that's a building and somebody brings up the idea you know you know what like buildings aren't fun to play with rocks I mean I guess a rock is fun to play with we used to throw rocks at each other this is the 80s we whatever we're dumb kids and probably still do it today but we used to throw rocks at each other and it was fun so I guess maybe a rock is more fun than building but a rock is not that much fun so rock on low on the list also for having a dumb name that puts him slightly higher than Stonedar well a little cooler name Stonedar I had, is he stoned all the time like Footloose from G.I. Joe I don't know that could be that could be fun to explore <laughs> what was Stonedar's personality like I don't remember does anybody know uh, this one is called Flying Fist He-Man, and Flying Fist He-Man had a series of weapons that he could sort of hurl or swing around, uh, and kind of cool, and if you didn't get your first He-Man, you could pick up Flying Fist He-Man, and he would be a pretty good addition. Okay, we have Snout Spout, pretty low on the list. Uh, Snout Spout, a robotic elephant. Again, one of the things, you know, a couple of factors here that we discussed about before that would make me put Snout Spout pretty low. Like, he's kind of cool looking, I'll admit. But uh, when we get into the Frank Frazetta world, he's a, uh, what are his powers? He squirts water. How is that going to help you in any way in any kind of battle? It's not. Two, he's a robotic elephant. But, and three, he got a dumb name. Snout Spout is a dumb name. It does not fit. It is not a good medieval horror 
you know, Robert E. Howard, weird fantasy character name. It's stupid. So Snap Out goes low on the list for me. Next on the list, number 24, we have Mechanic, okay? Now, Mechanic was a character that I did kind of appreciate. Um, he basically had an extending neck. Really, like, how often do you have to see over a building, right? Like, see over something. Like, that was his only thing. You'd just be like, all right, hey, we need to see over this rock. Mechanic, come here, come here. We need to see over a rock. And then he, his stupid head would go up. It's not very useful in battle. The other thing is it's also terrible for battle in one way because, like, now you've just exposed your neck. Like, you, you know, so for me, what would happen to Mechanic all the time would be, like, Mechanic would go up. Skeletor or somebody just like cut that stupid neck in half and then his head would fly off and like land somewhere. Um, I guess the deal with Mechanic is Man at Arms built him a new neck. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he would, he would I'd assume you die if you're, even your Mechanic gets cut off, but it's a dumb feature. I remember you using him and kind of having some fun with him though, uh, using it just as like a headbutt feature. You know, he would just headbutt a lot of people. Just... Next we have Wondar. Now this is uh, high on the list only because it is one of the rarest figures in the line. It says the Wonderbred He-Man known as uh, Wondar. Um, uh, this was an exclusive that you could mail away, I guess, if you got a, ate a lot of Wonder Bread, which everybody in the, in the 80s ate Wonder Bread. It was like, I think it was the only bread, right? Was it not the only, I think that was the only bread that existed back then. Now you got all kinds of weird wheat shit and, you know, all kinds of nutty breads and shit. We had Wonder Bread. That was it. It was white. It had sugar in it. It was full of dye and it was fine. You were fine with it and you survived. All right, uh, one dar though uh, is the Wonder Bread He Man. Um, I didn't have one dar. I don't want one dar. He is just a brown haired He Man. I don't even know what you would do with that. Like that is he's completely useless. But we'll put him up high for being this rare, bizarre, you know, phenomenon. It's kind of interesting and might be kind of cool to have him just on the rarity. Yeah. Rotar. Now Rotar is basically just a spinning little fat thing. Right, um, it's just a little spinning, whirling dervish, little fat guy, and uh, I think he's kind of fun. Uh, um, but I think you, you know, once you spin him a few times, you'd be like, All right, "This is kind of stupid." He's just sort of stupidly shaped, and um, not sure how he would fit in. Number twenty-one, we have a Prince Adam. Now, of course, you need Prince Adam as a figure. Uh, in order to play, he was useful. I remember getting Prince Adam, being like glad I had him, as he could play out the whole story now. Uh, Prince Adam is obviously, you know, modeled after the, the Clark Kent, and there's a sort of Clark Kent Superman concept going on here, which is always silly, which is like Prince Adam is just completely roided out. He's massive. He's got a dumbass Dutch boy haircut and, and, and physique as He-Man. But like nobody notices that he's He-Man, even though the fact that not only does he look exactly like He-Man, just wearing pink and purple pants and shit, but uh, he hangs out with a giant cat that is similar, looks exactly like He-Man's ride. And uh, so, so it's like, it's like Superman Clark Kent to the nth degree. How did no one figure this shit out that he was He-Man? Uh, that makes his figure kind of kind of low on the list. They even gave him like the same angry like um, poop a lot face that the He-Man figure had. I think you should have given him like a gentler like because I mean like the whole idea is Prince Adam. When he's Prince Adam, he's kind of a goofy like oh he's like doing a Bruce Wayne. I'm uh, Clark Kent. I'm like a nice, cool, little, wild and crazy guy here. Um, so nobody can tell that he's He-Man, even though he looks just like him. You needed him, but did you really love the figure? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, now number 20. And this one I'm just gonna, he's low on here just because of his name. And this is Fisto. Now, is he kind of cool? Yeah, he's a dude with a big metal fist, but oh, Fisto, really, that's your name? That, that's the best you could come up with, it was Fisto. All I can think of a Fisto is this, so I, you know, that's all I'm, I don't know how he earned that nickname, uh, but uh, I hope it had nothing to do with the movie Cruising. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying uh, no, no Fisto for me. Um, was he fun? Yeah, he was totally fun. He was, he was all right. 
Number 19, we've got Buzz Off, okay? Again, he's a B-man, and that's kind of cool, I guess, but he looks sort of dumb. He's got like a dumb face, right? He's just, he has a punchable face. And he also, uh, I mean, like a B-man is like, it's kind of cool, Ooh, he can like fly and he can sting, but then like, then does he, if he like stings somebody, does he die in like three minutes later? So, uh, yeah, he's, he's like low on my list of, uh, of cool He-Man heroes. Next on the list, we have Cyclone. Cyclone, a robot that can twirl around and create a little cyclone. It was kind of fun. You could squeeze his legs, or just, you, know, you could squeeze him, and he'd, his arms would spin around, and you'd, you know, like a whirly dervish, knock people around. Um, kind of fun, yeah. Again, like, they're getting real good at this point. Uh, he's, he's in the middle. I'd put him in the middle. Next in line, we have Orko. Now, Orko, of course, one of the main characters in the cartoon. Beloved character. But again, like I said, Orko is the Jar Jar Binks of the Masters of the Universe. And oh, hey, help! What's that? It's Orko. Oh, it's my old one. I, I forgot how to stop it. Next, we have number 16 is Clamp Champ. Now, I feel a little guilty putting the only diverse character in the entire line of Masters of the Universe so uh, middle. G.I. Joe, fully diverse. You know, right? Star Wars, we went Lando Calrissian. Thundercats, the uh, Panther was black. He was. I don't care what you have to say. He was black. In in He Man, we got like there are three characters that are not white. There's a there's two of them are ninjas, ninja or in jitsu. They're Asian, and then you got Clamshap, the only black man in the He Man uh, Masters of the Universe. Kind of a cool feature Clamp Champ had. We, you know, uh, I think that would be useful and something that uh, did work for me. I just think his name is so stupid. Clamp Champ. Who, who, would, who would call him that? That is just, it's one of the worst names. Uh, so he, he sits kind of in the middle there. Uh, could have had a couple more. Just, just you know, just a couple, just a little bit of diversity here. I think we need a diversity and inclusion specialist in, in Eternia to go to the He-Man's castle and be like, hey, did you ever notice that everybody around you is white? Uh, maybe we're gonna need to hire Robin D'Angelo to say, you know, hey, he man, what are you, what are you doing? What do you, what do you got against uh, people of color? Yeah, there are people yelling at me in the uh, in the comments right now, yelling at me right now. I uh, I, I guarantee it, and I and I welcome it. So there you go. Next we have number fifteen, Extendar. Now Extendar is like a cool version of uh, of Mechanic, right? where not only can he extend his neck, he can extend his arms and his legs and any parts of him uh, that are he needs to in battle. He's also another robot-ish type person. Uh, and I just thought the design of that figure was great. And he had so many great features that he was a really fun figure to battle with. One of the more sort of badass looking figures in the line. So I put up really high just for that design factor being so high. Number 14, we have Rio Blast. Now this guy is a cool, weird looking thing. He's just a, he's a cowboy. Why they would have cowboys, who knows. Uh, but his body just opens up and just guns just come all out of him um, everywhere from every orifice. He's got a gun. He doesn't have one of these, but he's got a gun everywhere else, which means he's still appropriate for children. So Rio Blast, he was a, he was a cool, uh, put them high on the list here. We have, and this is something I did not have, I didn't even really know it existed, but looking in and seeing this, this to me is one of the coolest things they ever did. Unfortunately, this was one of those things that you could get only get in Italy. One of the last things they ever did was they made giants, right? Giant figure, 14, 15, uh, somewhere around there, inches long, and this was Titus. He's a big old giant. That would have been awesome to play with as a kid. I would have loved something like that. Number 12, we have Zodak, one of the first figures ever. Zodak is a technically could be on either the villain or the hero list, but I think ultimately Zodak ends up being a, a hero. Uh, he's described mostly as neutral, right? That he no longer, he doesn't really help 
He-Man, nor does he help Skeletor. He is like a watcher, like the watcher in Marvel can just observe, right? Um, and he's a super powerful entity. I love that aspect that's really unique, and that is something that I think we need more of in Masters of the Universe and more exploration of these like entities like the Sorceress and Moss Man and Zodak really help build out the mythology and make it feel more like a real um, real fantasy world rather than just something that's you know a uh, silly kid's toy. Not there's anything wrong with silly kid's toy. I just like my silly kid's toys to have some lore uh, which there's tons of in the Masters of the Universe. And Zodak is a really big part of that. So that's why he is high on the list. Next we have Battle Armor He-Man. Now Battle Armor He-Man, uh, one of the coolest He-Man figures ever. Um, you hit his chest and it would swirl around with a mechanism that showed battle damage on his armor. Uh, other than that, so he was a great option. You didn't get the first He-Man. I think he's he's pretty cool and a good version of He-Man. And these are, these, now we're getting to the, the, the best of the best here. Moss Man. Moss Man gets a bad rap. I saw him on one of the, uh, a, a list of the worst He-Man figures and he was on there. I cannot fathom how you could not love Moss Man. Moss Man is a very cool character. He was also one of the coolest characters in the cartoon. And he's sort of this like weird entity that exists in the Masters of the Universe world. So I actually love Moss Man. I lo uh, love the way he looked, love the way he felt. Uh, one drawback about Moss Man is he would leave his little pieces of moss all around the house and he would kind of fall apart. But really one of the cooler characters in the Masters of the Universe series. Uh, I, I, I love me some Moss Man. Next, number nine, we have Stratos. Now, one of the first figures. Um, and I love this figure. He had a jetpack. He was the flying guy. Uh, and so therefore a lot of fun to have him just come by, sweep up, pick some villain up and just toss him somewhere. He didn't have any weapons with him, uh, but uh, you don't really need a weapon if you're you know, capable of flying and just bashing into people and tossing them in the air. And uh, so he was a lot of fun. Also a cool name, like he doesn't have a stupid ass name. He's not like Flyor, he's Stratos, cool name. Next we have Ram Man. Now Ram Man, he had a cool feature, smash him down, and then he, his, he popped back up and ram right into you. He came with a nice little ax. He just looked bulky and you know terrifying and uh, uh, that, that feature was so fun. Uh, that uh, he goes high up on my list. Uh, he also fit to me, he still fit to me as a warrior that would fit really well within the world of he of uh, the Masters of the Universe in that, you know, Frank Frazetta Conan-ish world. He looked like a good companion for He-Man. We have Roboto, man-at-arms invention, a sort of super robot with lots of weapons all over him. <laughs> Even without his laser gun. What's that? Or his laser axe. A robot! Or his awesome power claw. Roboto, Roboto, Roboto. This unstoppable enemy of evil. Go get him, Roboto! Roboto, Roboto, Roboto. Yeah! Is the most powerful robot in the universe. He had a transparent chest where you could see little gears going through, and I kind of love that detail. I love the idea, like sort of a steampunky, more. I, I kind of like that. I wish they maybe did more of that, a more sort of steampunk sci-fi take, um, rather than have everything be like so upfront, very obvious, you know, Star Wars levels of sci-fi, um, because. Uh, it just fits more in that fantasy realm, and he, he did have that, he had that kind of cool look, and later on he becomes more of a character in, in different versions of He-Man, where he has many different weapons. Um, I love that figure, I thought he was really fun to play with, uh, and uh, you know you could destroy him too and not feel too bad about it, which was also good, because he's a robot. Man-at-Arms can always rebuild him. So, uh, I put him high on the list. Number six, and these are like the big ones, right? So these are the big ones, and we have the Sorceress. 
Sorceress came in late in the line, but really, man, uh, we wanted and needed that Sorceress. She was just such an iconic part of the world. She's sort of like the Galadriel of the uh, He-Man world. Uh, sort of a, a powerful figure. It's a guardian and a mentor and really a big part of the lore. So um, she can turn into the eagle or the eagle? I don't know. Um, and uh, the figure was only okay, but for me, it was just, we needed that figure. It was such a big part of the story. Man E Faces. Now, this character is awesome looking. He just has such a cool look. He's got this power suit. Uh, there's various versions of Manny faces. One is he's like a, in disguise, which never makes sense. None of these, whenever, whenever you have a disguise figure, it never really adds up. It can't really work because, you know, they're wearing the same clothes and he's wearing like this weird super suit. But he had three faces. One was like a good human face. One was a monster face and one was like neutral robot face. And he was conflicted in the little mini comics, uh, which made him really interesting. So, uh... He was very cool, love the look and the style and the play feature of Man E Faces. Next we have Thunder Punch He-Man. Now I would say, yeah, you got a He-Man, do you really need like all these variants of He-Man? They were totally fun. But once you got your He-Man, you got your He-Man. But in this case, man, this was just such an awesome figure. He pulls his arm back and he's got a cap in his back and once he throws the punch, like cap, boom, explodes as a kid. So much fun. He also has a good look to him. So I thought he had a good, nice, like, suit of armor and setup. He didn't look so different from your regular He-Man that if you couldn't get the original He-Man, you, you didn't mind that this was the only one you have. Uh, but that one feature was maybe the coolest and most inventive feature in the Masters of the Universe. Next we have Man at Arms. And uh, what I loved about Man at Arms is one, he was, um, he only came, only came with a mace, but he also came with like removable pieces of armor. And I think you understood that in that armor was any kind of weapon you wanted. So whether it was shooting bolts of energy or electricity or little, so that was a lot of the play was to see, well, what would Man at Arms like have up his sleeve at any given time? He was also a great character, you know, he's sort of He-Man's right-hand man, um, and also the, the leader of security in the castle. Um, so, he was a really cool character, one of the best. And next we have Man-at-Arms' adopted daughter, Tila. All right, now obviously, as any boy in the 80s was loving any sort of hot female action figure, girl yeah it's weird i know whatever get over it we did right we hot cartoon girls there's the they were plentiful and it was one of them she was a badass too I'm endlessly online right now tila was one of the first strong female characters in uh action figure lore put her up there with you know uh, Scarlet and Lady J as one of us, and Princess Leia as uh, you know when you're first used as a kid. I mean, as a kid, I always wanted more female characters. I was not. I know they, they said they don't sell well apparently, and so they were unlikely to produce them. But for me, I was always up for another badass female character, and wish there were more. And uh, so Tila is very high on my list of favorite characters. Next, of course, we have He Man, and I know it would be a cliche to see that the best character and the number one is going to be the number one in the line, which is the main protagonist. But let's face facts. He-Man is, is what the show is about. Kevin Smith, just, just, so, you, just so you know. Yeah, He-Man he is what the show is about. And, uh, and he was a, a very cool character, especially the Conan, Robert E. Howard, barbarian version from those little mini comics and he was the best figure uh what do you think please what did i get wrong anybody who like super fans of he-man like i am a gi joe want to tell me what i got wrong please do uh in the comments below and if you want to hear my ranking of the best villains that's what we're doing next check that out right about there i'm gonna see.
And you can like and subscribe if you want to uh, for more weird action figure talk. Um, let me know if there's anything else you want me to do, any other uh, the major uh, lines that, that I should rank or uh, in the comments.